Yeah, of course, of course. GT Arcade Live. That's kind All of cool. right. Looks like we're good. So, everybody, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is for you. We have a special guest today. We have Incredible John. He is a YouTube and live stream personality on both GT Arcade and other platforms. So we're going to put some information up on the screen in a little bit to give you information on how you can contact him or support him. But today we're just going to be kind of asking him some questions about Hello, everyone. Different things uh, related to not only his YouTube, not only uh, his live streaming, but gaming as well. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me on this interview. I'm very excited to get it started and to answer questions. And I'm, I'm just very excited to be here. Thank you for having me on your live stream. No, That's th awesome. thank you for coming. Um, when I thought about that, you were the very first person I thought about when I thought, who did I want to interview you've got such a great personality and you know you're very well known so i really appreciate you being here with us that's no problem for me I, i'm just very happy to be here <laughs> i haven't really been interviewed much so this is great I'm, I'm very thankful so yeah it's it's good to be here it's very good to be here welcome junior gal and beatrix to the stream we are interviewing incredible john today let me just pull up my list that I have of stuff I want to cover. Yes, of course. And of course, you guys in chat, if you have any questions for John or anything that you would like to have answered, please feel free to let us know in chat. Yeah, I'm happy to answer many questions. Just ask him away. <laughs> I will probably, uh, I'll ask you a question I've put on my sheet here and then I'll probably want to ask a thousand other questions related to your answer that I didn't think of so oh yeah of course of course I'll try to give the best answers I possibly can <laughs> well let's start really simple just tell us a little bit about yourself where you're from how old you are if you want to reveal that yes of course I am 96 years old kidding <laughs> I'm I'm 23 years old I'm a guy from Norway um, I work with security in real life right now, but um, for the most part of my YouTube channel, I think uh, I've been kind of, I've not really done much in real life other than making videos. So how it all started, it was uh, December, uh, Christmas Eve uh, 2016. I decided to make videos just because um, I asked in game uh, in Age of Angels 2 because that's where it all started. Uh, and I asked if I should record these Battle Royale battles because I really enjoyed playing that game mode in Age of Angels 2. And someone said, yeah, sure, do it. So I went on my Mac, I opened up QuickTime Player, which was the OG uh, recording soft software uh, before I knew better. And I just made videos. And that's what I've been doing ever since. And I still can't believe to this day that people are still watching my videos and I'm forever grateful for that. But around that, in real life, I am very passionate about things. When I feel something, I, I feel pretty passionate about stuff. For example, like over how things are supposed to be. For example, let's say you you have uh, let's say you have something and that something is wrong or that something is buggy. Especially for League of Angels, if something is wrong there or there is something I don't like, or there is something I want to be there, I want my voice to be heard. And I'm so lucky to be on this platform on YouTube uh, that I'm able to make my voice heard and hopefully make a difference in the game itself for everyone who plays it. For, uh, I hope to the better anyway. So well, that's, a, that's a little bit about me. I can tell you, you've made a huge impact on me in terms of I've learned so much from you about the game. Um, just your videos have, I probably wouldn't be as into League of Angels as I am now if it weren't for you. So thank you for that. And from everyone else too, that I'm sure appreciates your videos. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Like you guys who who watch my videos and who plays the game, it's you I'm making the videos for. It's not the ownership, the leadership for the game. I'm not making it for the moderators even. 
I'm purely making it for the community because I want the community to have a voice. And I, I'm, I'm very passionate about making the community have a voice and that players have a say in the matter of the way the game is going. Because uh, in Chinese game companies, typically it's very... The players don't typically communicate with the leadership of Chinese companies, so it's very nice to be able to communicate with them and actually make a difference in game. And for people, of course, I want the community to have a voice. I love that. That's you know beyond just your enjoyment, um, giving the community a voice and give being a platform for that. That's I think made a huge difference in that community, in this community. So thank you for that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what I do. It's my pleasure. I, I really like doing it. So I'm not going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> so how long have you been doing videos in total? When you, I, you, I'm sure you said the year, but I didn't quite catch that. I've been doing it since December 24th, 2016. 2016. So I've been doing, yeah, so I've been doing it for, yeah, it's one and a half years or so, closer wow. to that anyway. Uh, and I have like 1,300 videos. So if you're ever bored, I have a few hours of content, you could say. That is uh, amazing. <laughs> Absolutely yeah, amazing. So, I yeah, in big. Oh yeah. I know you I knew you put out a lot of content, but I had no idea the numbers were that incredible. So you you truly are incredible, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Because the beginning, like 30, 40 videos, I didn't have any commentary. And I'm so happy that I started commentating later on because the channel would die if I just made music in the background. I feel like that would be very repetitive. So I'm very happy that. I started commentating later on. You know, I had the same thing years. with Twitch when I started out. I just, you know, had my music going in the background and didn't really, I didn't have anyone to interact with. So it, it, it never occurred to me until I started getting a couple of viewers in there like, hey, what's going yeah. on, you know? So, <laughs> and, and that's what I love about streaming on GT Arcade is this community is so interactive with the streaming. So I just love that. Yeah, I'm very, I'm fairly new to GT Arcade Live because I, I decided for myself that I did not want to stream much on it purely because I wanted to wait until it was well polished, non buggy whatsoever. Uh, so, but I hear lately that it's getting quite high up there. So I, I may start streaming a little bit more there later because I'm also a part of the streaming group. I just haven't streamed much because of uh, videos not. Because of different bugs, which I, I hope will be fixed very soon, if not already. Right. And I, and I completely understand how frustrating that can be to, you know, want to just get your content out there and run into the bugs. But um, I can tell you from my end, it's I, I don't know how it was before. I, I just have been pretty happy with, um, you know, I, I kind of streamlined over from st Twitch doing that because I didn't have League of Angels viewers there, and they're here. So I've been pretty happy with it personally. Well, that's that's a relief. I may I may start streaming a little bit on it. Now that my YouTube channel is filled with League of Angels 3, I may fill the GT Arcade Live a little bit more with League of Angels Paradise Land because that's still a game to be reckoned with. It's a very good game. I, I love I love Paradise Land. Speaking of League of Angels franchise, can you tell us a little bit about um, what games you are playing or have actively played in, currently playing or have played in the past? I have, uh, before YouTube, I played League of Angels 1 for a very long time, probably almost a year or so. And then uh, League of Angels 2 came around and I played that for like nine or eight months before I started recording. And after League of Angels 2, I fell off of it last summer uh, yeah, last summer, end of last summer, and I've only kind of been making videos of it just to just to. It's, it's fun. It's fun to make videos of it, but it's not very fun to play it by myself, not recording it. After that, um, after some things happened, and after after Legend of Angels two, I started playing um, uh, League of Angels Paradise Land a lot. It's a very good game. I really love recording it. And it's it's just very fun. But again, I don't play it off camera because 
even this sounds kind of hypocritical, but I love recording games, but I don't really like playing them by myself for some reason. Like sitting on my own time, I I I like recording and live streaming games, and that's that's the type of gamer I am. If the if that's if there is a category for that, but I also play a game very frequently on my free time. It's a mobile game called Idle Heroes. Uh, most people have not heard about it, but uh, I a private server of, of it, so it's quite good. Like you're free with thirteen, so that that's the only difference. So I re- I really like it because it is a true good phone game which is not pay to win because you literally cannot pay on there uh, so it's it's 100 fair for everyone and i really like the idea of that and i wish sometime gt arcade would make a similar game but we all know that they will not do that because it's a bad business model because they, they have to make money they have to make salary they are not working for free which right. is the, obviously interesting but they, they should make it a little bit more friendly for free players i think but i think everyone thinks that so yeah What's yeah. around that? I've, I've been playing House Flipper for recording. Not too much lately, not too much. I haven't had time to play it because it's a very time consuming game. It's this em- simulator game where you fix people's houses and whatnot and you get money and you start, you, you, have, your, you have your own business. And the further you get along in the game, uh, you can start h- hiring people to work for you, I think, and you can sell houses. And it's like this very good progression game where you begin at zero, basically, and you work your way up to have a, a small empire, probably. <laughs> I haven't gotten to the end yet, so I don't know. Is that a PC game? Uh, it, it's that... a PC game, yeah. Okay, gotcha. It's a Steam game. Oh, very cool. It costs like $15. It costs like $10. I, oh, I don't nice. know, $20 or so. Okay, good. So, yeah. so it's very reasonable. No paying us. Yeah, it's it's quite a large game with many hours. I'm like, I played it like maybe twelve hours or so. I'm not. I feel, don't feel like I've scratched the surface yet. So, it's a it's a good time killer if you like those types of games. Very cool. And I think I saw. Do you have a secondary channel that, as well? That's. I I thought I uh, saw something about that. I have a, um, I have uh, many. I have two channels or something extra. Okay. So I have one called John Gaming or something. I I don't recall, but if anyone wants to link, I can probably find it if I have it nearby. Anyway, I have a vlog channel where I've made vlogs, but this was way before before Incredible John. It was way before my channel now. Uh, I don't post on it anymore, but there's a lot of old cringy vlogs if you like that. Uh, then I have uh, author gaming channel which failed and died. <laughs> it it hit rock. It was like Titanic. It was good, and then I did. I didn't really have motivation to record anymore on it because I didn't have the proper software, and I didn't have the motivation to record, and I didn't know what the games to record because this was. While I played Legion of Ages One, and I was I wasn't thinking about recording that because I w- I was sure that nobody would watch it. Uh, but uh, surprise, surprise, people actually liked watching Legion of Angels games. Um, and I have a new channel now called Five Types of Things. I have only two videos on it so far, but that's because I want to work on the videos. They're a little bit more quality, and uh, it's like f- uh, five types of different things. For example, five types of First videos, five types of legi- or five types of first YouTube videos. Like, what personalities? Five types of personalities for first YouTube first YouTube videos, and then we have five types of football fans, which is soccer in the US. Uh, so I've made those two videos, and I'm not sure what else to make. I actually have a video, but I haven't quite released it yet because I I, I don't feel satisfied with it. But it was five types of apartments but i have not oh. yet uh, released that because i need i feel like i need to do more stuff for that first but yeah that, that's that's my other channel speaking of you know the stuff that you have to do that goes into um making these videos is it are, are the majority you know are you live and then you can just kind of it's you save the broadcast and you upload it or are you doing a lot of editing to these is it a lot of work. Um, the, it's, it depends. Most videos where I don't live stream, I typically live stream and I leave it as is on the on the on the YouTube platform. 
or I record. When I record, I do uh, edit in an intro, some intro music, and I crop if necessary for Age of Angels and even Age of Angels 3 now because I don't have a full screen feature. And I also edit an outro and I fix with cropping there. I edit the volume, I make it sound a little bit better with my voice. But other than that, if there's no boring parts or no parts I remember from the recording that should be put out, I don't really cut it much. After. I don't I don't edit a lot. Okay. Uh, but when, when there's a video I care about or a special video, I tend to like to edit it. But for the most part, I leave it unedited unless I feel like there's a part that should not be in the video. But typically, the videos are are fine enough to just leave unedited and people can skip through if they don't like some boring parts. It's totally up to them. So how much time when you are having something that you edit, um, do, I, I mean, I'm guessing from what you've just said that you would prefer to spend your time streaming as opposed to editing the videos. And so do you enjoy when you are doing that editing and, or do you just, how much time do you spend, you know, doing that stuff? Editing? Mm-hmm. It genuinely does take like five minutes, not oh, even okay. that. Okay. Uh, but when I, yeah, the, what takes time, I don't necessarily care about, it's not editing, which is stressful. It's not, nothing is stressful, but it just takes, say, I have a 50 minute video I want to export in 4K that will take my Mac uh, like over an hour or so to export, and then I have to upload. Upload is quick now that I live at a new place, but still, there's a lot of extra work. Uh, on the other hand, if you live stream, everything is already rendered, everything is good. You just leave, leave it, as is it as it is. So there's no post-production. It's just, it's just there for everyone to watch. So there's no editing or anything. It's just right there. So you have much less work when you live stream, much less background work or anything. Very cool. So I know you got some really quality um, equipment that you, as you grew on your channel, I know you got a new camera, you got your green screen. Um, I don't it, have a green screen anymore. You don't? I, no, I, I took it away. I okay. was like, I, li- I like my background now, so I'll, yeah. Cool. <laughs> but I, I had the green screen and I can put it up again, but I feel like it takes too much space and it's just too much work with it. So mm-hmm. I decided yeah. to just have another background. Yeah, if you like your background, it's definitely a lot less work. (laughs) The green screen is not easy to work with. It it can depend on the time of day. You have to make adjustments because of the lighting. It's just just a lot of work, Mm -hmm. unnecessary work at that point. And people didn't really seem to notice or complain about me not having it because I think my black background now is quite all right. It's some sound paneling things. So, yeah. Very cool. (laughs) So in, would you say you've invested a lot into the streaming that you, you know, with the equipment and what you've put into, I imagine the camera, the quality is fantastic. That was a decent expenditure, I would think. Yeah, the microphone, I think it costed maybe like, um, I'd say probably 250 to $300. I think $300 was the microphone with wow. the arm. Mm-hmm. And the webcam was probably around the same. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, but like, and the sound paneling behind me, it was also like $300. So I've invested probably like, looking away from the PC, which I would have had other, I, I've, I'm happy with this PC for now. Like, the, I don't count as, my PC as an investment to streaming. Right. So I'd say my probably around at most a thousand dollars spent into into making a good setup. Uh so it, it's a bit, but it's definitely worth it. I've definitely spent more than I uh, than I earn. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well that's uh, actually not. I think it's even at this point. I don't know. I don't pay too much attention. I just let, I just make videos for for the fun of it. The money is right. just a it's just a nice bonus. Yeah, that's I. It, that seems to me um, to be something that determines the longevity of someone's. The people that put the sweat into it and they really enjoy. You know, they're just enjoying themselves. They don't. Um, they're not there doing a job. They enjoy it. I. That seems where you're at with this whole thing. Yeah, like 
of course it's nice to earn a little bit. I don't, of course, I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> I could always just go without a YouTube partner and stop ads on my videos. But I figure like if you put four or five hours of time into something, it's of course fine to ask for a dollar for five hours of work. Uh, not that it's called work, but you know, like you put a lot of time into something, so it's always nice to get a little bit from it. But it's that's definitely not the reason why I'm doing it. I would easily do it if money was an aspect. I would still be doing YouTube. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and that's what I think separates the the great YouTube personalities from the ones who are forcing their content out. I I never feel like that with you when I watch your videos. I I just feel like you're having a good time, and I'm enjoying it with you. Yeah, that's that's what I I want. I want. I am very. I'm really enjoying making videos. I'm really enjoying my time on the games, and I do not do it forced. Sometimes I do feel after work, I feel like I need to force myself to make a video. But I, when I when I first start making the video, I don't feel forced at all. I'm like super happy and good. And after that's the cool. recording or live stream, I'm like, yeah, okay, it was maybe it was worth doing this. That's so I've never cool. had a video where I've been like, oh, I shouldn't have done this or. Yeah, I, I, I feel pretty satisfied when making videos. But sometimes the motivation to make videos may be a little bit low. It depends on the day and my energies, which I think is for most people. Go ahead and put up your YouTube link right now. We've got some more links for you guys as we discuss these things, um, which I think I'll just kind of segue into the next link I'm going to put up, which is your Discord. I wanted to ask you, uh, how did the how did your community come about? You have a great community, um, you know. It just you have your own little community, which is so cool. How did that all start for you? Well, um, to be honest, it's how I got known on YouTube. It was kind of like I was a dick. Okay, the first five videos I did share. In on the Legion of Angels page comments. Uh, so I kind of did a douchebag move there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I got my first viewers. Uh, I did it for like five or six videos. I, w I didn't feel bad because uh, I have 1,300. So you can imagine I didn't do it for, for the majority of them. Uh, but it was just in the very beginning when I didn't have any viewers except for one or two or two. And then I, did, then I decided to share like my videos on my server. Because I wanted my server to kind of, I, I I wanted to just share with my server like my experiences from the game, and uh, people started sharing it to their friends and their friends and their friends, and that's kind of how I, how my channel grew. Like the community grew from people knowing each other to people knowing each other, and now later on people can actually just search for League of Angels too or League of Angels in general, and they'll find my channel. Uh, but it's very difficult when you have a new channel because your channel is not searchable. Uh, you will have to gain a commu community through your friends, and then they may change. They may share to their friends, and possibly. Uh, but I'm not advising anyone to go leave, share their channel, or advertise it in other YouTubers' videos. That I hate those people because they're. I hate people who share who advertise their channel on other people's channels. But when you have like an official thing as a YouTube page, like an entire, or I'm not, I'm not YouTube page, I mean Facebook page for the official game, you're obviously allowed to like share a few videos. I wouldn't share every single video. Like if you have 100 videos, I would not comment 100 links. <laughs> but for the very first, definitely it would help you grow a little bit. But you have to have content that you're satisfied with. If you're not satisfied with your content, I do not share it. Make sure your content is quality. Make sure you have a nice setup. I do sincere, sincerely suggest you ha compensate, but I know many people don't feel comfort comfortable with that. But you do need something that makes you a little bit unique. And I guess you have a little bit of a bigger chance to get known then. So I, I got known from not compensating. And then when I started commentating, I got even more known. So commentating is definitely a good thing nobody should be scared of, but I understand people who sit making videos are typically shy. Like I, I, was, I was shy, uh, now I'm not. So it's, it, times change. Uh, YouTube yeah. can change you. Yeah, it changes your funny. personality. That's funny. Um, speaking of your personality, I wanted to showcase uh, one of your videos. It's um, the intro to your channel. 
it it's oh, yeah, just I, it showcases your personality in the most perfect way so i just wanted everybody to watch that let me pull that up oh man yeah i remember that one oh i watched it last <laughs> night and i thought this is perfect this is exactly what i'm looking for um you know so people can get an idea of you and well of course this doesn't yeah. want to work but Yes, of course. <laughs> I remember that. That was so funny to make, and I, I was kind of cringing at myself releasing it. I'm happy to see you here. This is cringy, right? I'm a cringy channel, so... <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to this it's channel. Or... Everyone let you, let old me know and new? When are you a subscriber? Are yes, you old subscriber? Like... Whatever you are, if you're seeing this video, welcome to my channel. This is my introduction. It's quite big, because I have had a, I have had an old in uh, introduction for a very long time. But now we're new. Everything is new. So if you're watching this, I'm uploading an Ninja videos I'm going to try to upload Fortnite we're going to have a very fun time and I hope to see you here I hope to see you stick by have some fun I'm going to live stream as well on Twitch if you're interested in that anyway thanks guys so much for watching and hopefully I will see you around on my channel it's gonna be a very fun time thanks for watching this and goodbye I'm cringy hmm Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Incredible John. Uh, this is my intro to this channel. And I'm, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what I produce and what I'm doing. So, I am uploading uh, gaming videos mainly. Also some vlogs. Uh, I'm trying to expand my gaming type of videos. I wanted to do a lot of different games. Hopefully you guys are excited for that. Why would you be excited if you're not seeing this channel? Hopefully you guys are going to stick around. To watch my channel and uh, I'm uploading Ninja Evangelist videos. I'm uploading. Um, hello. hello, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm uploading Ninja Evangelist videos. Fortnite, I'm going to try my take on. Hopefully, you will stick by this channel. This is the first video that you see, so hopefully, you will not find me cringy like I am. I'm trying to. F I'm trying to act here, so don't don't tell anyone else. But I'm I'm trying to act like I'm not cringy right now for this intro. <laughs> Anyway, thanks guys for watching this intro to this channel, and if you're excited or you like any of these games I mentioned, then by all means stick around. I'm also going to expand my gaming videos, I'm going to expand my gaming videos, and I'm going to upload way more varied, varied gaming content. So hopefully you will be around for that as well, and hopefully you, hopefully you stick around. And if you don't, well, it's up to you. Like, if you don't, hmm. hopefully I will see you around. Thanks for watching this video. And I will talk to you guys. Oh, and thanks for watching this video. And hopefully I will see you in my other videos. Have a good one and goodbye. Hopefully I will see you watching my other videos as well. Hopefully I, hopefully you can join this community. And <laughs> I'm not the best at making stuff happen. Just so you know, I don't know what to. Do. I don't know what to do. I'm not drunk, by the way. I'm fully, I'm fully sober, even though I don't look it. I actually am though. I don't drink a lot. What should you make an intro of in this channel, man? Like, it's different. It's freaking difficult. I should just upload the entire thing so everyone can see how freaking cringy I am. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, may maybe that's good. I don't know. I want to be professional, I swear. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm going to try so. Okay, well, I'm from Norway, by the way, if anyone wondered that as well. Okay, this is going to be the first intro ever. Well, thanks for watching, for real, sis, and I will see you watching my other videos. Have, have a good one. I really sincerely hope you have a good one, and have a good day, and or weekend, and or night, and or Saturday, and or what freaking ever day it is for you right now. You can comment down what day it is for you, that, that way I know you've kind of seen, okay, no, trim cringe. I don't know. I, I have emojis too. Like, you can sponsor me on this stuff right here, right when I, I live stream on YouTube and Twitch. So if you sponsor, you'll get a kind of, a, like, a sunglasses emoji, which I made. Which is kind of cool, I guess, but it's up to you. You first have to, like, go over and see some videos I've made. Then you can decide, hmm, is this worth investing in? Then you can be like... Hmm, yeah, maybe it is. And if it's not, then by all means, it's fine. I love you either way. You're amazing. And... <sighs> Goodbye. That video, it just... I don't think it could showcase... If I were somebody coming into this channel for the first time and I had no idea what I was expecting, it, it sets you apart. It really shows your personality. It... I would watch you just for that. So it was great. Thank you for that. That's that's amazing to hear. That's very good to hear. Because I was very nervous making that a new trailer because I already had the trailer, but it was so super outdated. So I needed a new one. Uh, but maybe my channel trailer explains why why people are 
sticking through i guess i don't i don't know i'm i'm just happy that you that you liked the trailer and i didn't i didn't put too much work into it. i just edited it a lot like that was a, one of the more heavily edited videos i did just because it was a trailer like it's supposed to be a little bit right. more than a normal video so i guess going back to your discord channel um how much work goes into maintaining and you know making sure people aren't spamming everywhere and does it take a lot of work to have your own discord channel it takes a work to get people typing i'll tell you that much it's quite even though we're like how many members are we right now even though we're 990 members there is wow. not too much activity going on and i i but it's not I think even the official channels, League of Angels Discord channels, I don't think there's a lot of activity there because people don't feel like typing. But it, with maintaining, if in case of spam, it's it's very easy. You you have moderators, and if you're on yourself and you see someone spamming, you can easily just uh, warn them and probably kick them. And if they continue, just yeah, just time. Yeah, it's 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 relatively easy to to manage a Discord, but it's quite difficult to make a discord active you can of course have a discord with a lot of members but it's keeping it active which is difficult in my opinion anyway keeping it keeping people typing because it's difficult when the when people are not yeah it's it's difficult to keep it active when it comes to chatting and whatnot but, you know uh, that, that yeah. never even occurred to me to me i was thinking the hard part would be um you know, just keeping the channel in order. But ne yeah, that never even occurred to me. So I can see yeah, why that would be hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very difficult. Like my old Discord channel, like it had like 900 members and I think like 800 of them was inactive. I think most of it was wow. inactive. Then you, then, you can, then you can just imagine, even though a server has a lot of members, if I do it like a giveaway in my channel, like for member reachings or any for any reason, I, I type it down, I tag everyone, maybe like 40, 50 people at most are, uh, are like typing numbers to be able to win money. Meanwhile, like 900 plus are not typing anything. And typically there's a lot of those 900 who is offline all the time. So us uh, don't be... If you see a Discord with a lot of members, don't be in... It doesn't mean it's a very active Discord, even though it has a lot of members. That makes sense, yep. Uh, Junior Gal, thank you so much for the gifts. I appreciate that very much. Um, how are you feeling? Let's talk a little bit about League of Angels 3. I know you said you've been putting out some content. How are you feeling about it? I do like it, and from my okay, of course, a new game is going to have bugs, but from my initial uh, reaction to it is when I report bugs, I do get responded to saying that the developers will fix it, and it was never like that in Egypt and Jitsu. If you reported a bug, nothing happened. So if they manage to keep their promise to actually fix bugs early on, hopefully making it a more closer to being a bug-free game, I, I'd say I'm very impressed. Uh, but let's see if they can hold their promise because they can. They can say they'll fix things, but we all know that it doesn't. Even though they say something, it doesn't necessarily mean they actually do do what they say. Uh, but I'm definitely enjoying the game so far. I like the systems, and I like how it's not ultra pay to win. It's very pay to win. Okay, it's very pay to win. But you can still do fairly decent for free. Uh, but of course, it starts with little pay to win, and I assume they'll make it very pay to win. But for for my initial initial impression after playing it uh, for six episodes right now, after, if this is after the closed beta. I made seven videos there as well in February. Anyway, I do I do like it. I do like it so far. It's a good game. It's a nice time consumer. Like I uploaded a video today where I just did things I missed the other days, and that was like three hours and 37 minutes. Wow. And that's just, that's just things I hadn't done on the side while I made my other playthrough of the other five episodes. Wow. So there's definitely a lot of content there, and you can definitely do a bunch of things. But there are a bunch of things that needs improving. 
Uh, I could I could uh, talk about what needs improving for a very long time, so I don't think I'll bore you guys with that. <laughs> so yeah, that's a little bit about that. There was something else I was going to ask related. Oh, have you invested anything into uh, three yet? Twenty dollars. Okay, and how That's did you feel thing. about your twenty dollars? Uh, did you feel like it was worthwhile, or no, it's not. Um, I'm not doing it for the diamonds. I'm not doing it for the recharge benefits. Even I'm purely doing it for the whip benefits because I know whip benefits can play a big part. Uh, when you're going long free to play, which I'm intending to do. Uh, whip can really help you do well and monthly cards. So that's the only things I will be recharging for after I'm at my satisfied whip level, which will be VIP 10. After that, I'll not recharge anymore and I will say free to play. But the reason it's not worth it is because I know in one year, this game will give four times diamonds, two times topaz, uh, ultra gear, tens of thousands of resources for the same price. You get nothing from right now. So the game will start off hard. You'll recharge a lot for very little. And as the game goes on, it will give more and more for your dollars. Uh, so overall, it's a way they keep to keep you interested in recharging. Mm -hmm. they, it makes you feel like, oh, that's a good deal. Then you do it. And then there comes another good deal in one week. Oh, that's a good deal. And then you do it. And that's how they keep a steady income. So they make events quite bad, make people recharge, and they make them a little bit better to keep people recharging. Um, that makes uh, sense yeah. to me now because <clears throat> yeah, so it me. was it wasn't worth it in raw resources. No, <laughs> I uh, I also put twenty dollars into it, and you know when you're coming from LOA two and you put twenty dollars in, and you're like, oh my gosh, I got so much stuff. Yeah, I was so much. I was so let down by what I got, and so. Uh, you know, I'm I'm glad to hear that I'm not the only person, and I think it's maybe just the expectations coming from LOA2, at least for me. Yeah, and it's just, now you know how it works. It begins bad and go, gets good. So if you are a player who wants to recharge, let's say wait a year or two and then play the game, because then it will be much easier for you. <laughs> So just curious, what did, did have you spent the topaz yet that you got? And if so, on what? I did spend the topazes and I spent some of them on the guild contribution because I didn't, I was dumb. And I also spent it on uh, buying some of the whip, whip packs, whip purchases or whatever, like the whip packs, giving you some resources and whatnot. That was also not worth it. Uh, other than that, I have 87 topaz left. So. Yeah, that, that's about I'm what I spent I'm in the same on. boat, so don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah, I didn't spend them too wisely. I should have spent for monthly cards, but I didn't, I didn't know that they, were, that they existed before I had spent. So, yeah. I actually, I was very torn also between the monthly cards and the packages. And um, I thought, well, if I put more money in, then, you know, maybe I'll just get the combined. I, I couldn't yeah, I save. Want, I want the combined one for... 1700 i mm -hmm. wanted that but i mm -hmm. i didn't I, I didn't realize it was a thing actually i purchased the packages and then i saw oh shit there's actually nobility privileges here <laughs> so I, I didn't pay much attention to that yeah i didn't either I, I i took a little bit i was streaming at the time when i was reading it so i took not a lot of time <laughs> just kind of glanced it over yeah when you're streaming you lose or streaming or and it's basically entertaining and you do lose a lot of your focus on things. So every streamer may look stupid, but they may not be that when they're not streaming. Because <laughs> <laughs> you do miss a lot of things when you're streaming. A bunch of things, actually. And you forget things quite easily as well because you have to continue commentating. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you said that because I sometimes almost feel like I'm ADD when I'm streaming and I, I think I'm doing something in game and the next thing, you know, I'm just kind of off somewhere else. And... I thought it was, I think you're absolutely right that it's a matter of I'm concentrating on commentating and, you know, entertaining. Yeah, that's that's what exactly it is. what it is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, actually. That's, you, you, you're focusing on commentating, you're focusing about doing things on ga in game, then you're just going to do something real quick and then you can all of a sudden, oh, sh what was I just doing, like, before you did that thing? And there's just, a, like, that happened to me today, like, I was doing something and then I was... In, 
interrupted by doing something else and then I'd forgot what I was doing in the first place. <laughs> so yeah, I, it has happened to me on, on a few occasions. And that's just because you commentate and you're focusing on commentating for the most part. Right. Um, I'm going to put a link up on the screen now. I minimized this so that we could actually see my links. They weren't showing uh, when I had your YouTube page up. But I am going to put up a link for how you can support Incredible John. Um, it, you get some benefits by supporting him. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about your Patreon. Yeah, so I made my Patreon a good while ago, like way long ago. And I didn't expect anyone to support on it, but I wanted people to be like, have the option to support me on my videos. Because at the moment, I'm already getting quite a lot from it, which I'm so thankful for, by the way. And I try to give people benefits. Like you get, a, um, a, you get featured in my descriptions if you support. And if you support enough, you will be in all my outros. And if you... I have 1,300 videos now. Imagine I make 1,300 more videos with your name in them. Sales pitch right there. And uh, I try I try to make Patreon-exclusive content. I've only made one where I eat uh, habanero jelly bean uh, if I am in the minority in a game called Would You Rather. So that's something. But I'm, tr I'm trying to do more with Patreon, but it's very difficult because I don't know what people want. So I, I've been trying to figure out what people want to have as a benefit, what makes them want to support me. Because most of these roles basically give the same thing, basically. Uh, so I don't know what benefits to give, but my Patreon is a place where you can support me. It's per month. Uh, so you can choose $3, $5, $7, $10, and you can support, if you're a rich person, you can support like all the way up to 400 <laughs> but nobody has ever done that and I doubt anyone will ever do that but yeah it's 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 an option and you do help me make my videos you do help me purchase new things for example a lot of the YouTube money and Patreon money has helped me purchase this new microphone my webcam and like house flipper on Steam like it helps me even do a few recharges on the game to make the videos more entertaining so you're basically contributing making my videos a little bit more fun and your benefits is, of course, uh, like being in the description and or being in the outro of my video. But if you do have any suggestions over what you want, would want as a benefit for supporting, then I'm all yours, basically. Just tell me what you want and I I'll see if I can make it that happen. But yeah, that's my Patreon anyway. I want people to, to have an option to support me. And when they support me, I want them to feel like it's worth their money. So guys, it sounds like John really, you know, you tell John what you want. You can put it in the chat, contact him in his Discord server, which is right here. Let him know. He's, he's wanting to know what you guys want. So, and he can make that happen for you. He, he really appreciates your support. So please um, make sure you go and visit his channel. Make sure you visit his Discord. Make sure you visit his Patreon because... It's um, not, not cheap doing what he does. Yeah, it's quite expensive. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it, every, every dollar helps, I say. Like if someone donates $3 a month, like that's, that's more than most of my viewers, literally. I have eight Patreon supporters. Those eight Patreon wow. supporters support more than over, over 3,000 viewers or however many viewers I, I, I get uh, a video it supports much more than the average person so if you feel like three dollars isn't much it's very much to me because you're supporting much more than many of my viewers to the good majority of them so and right. anything helps towards the setup and, uh, you and have myself. to also consider that this is um your time is worth something too you put a lot of your own time you know that and you enjoy it so that's important but Time is worth something too. He is spending his time trying, you know, putting out entertainment. Um, so that's important to think about when you're thinking about any YouTube personality or you know anyone making content. If you love it, support them absolutely. Yeah, that's very true, and that's why I, appreci I appreciate people not using ad blocker because when people use ad blocker, I don't get anything from of you. Oh, okay, <laughs> is, uh, like, that's a good tip. Yeah, there was a 
research thing, I think they figured out that over 75% of users use ad blocker. I think I think it's uh, it's I think it's that ridiculous between the youth uh, like teenagers. I think over seventy five percent use that on YouTube, and that makes all the YouTube streamers. If everyone stopped using AdBlocker, the streamers, the YouTubers, they would earn seventy five percent more money, wow. and that's quite insane. Yeah, that quite is crazy, and it's so accessible and easy. Like with Chrome, it, you know, yeah. you can just add and it and be done. Yeah, and what you can do, you can of course use AdBlocker. I used AdBlocker for crying out loud, but you can whitelist YouTube, for mm -hmm. example. Then you won't mm -hmm. have it running on on YouTube, but you can have it running anywhere else. So it's very easy to do, and you only have like five seconds of ads. If you don't have ex an extra five seconds in your life, then of course you are a very busy person at that point. Then you shouldn't have time to watch the video at all, mm -hmm. I guess. That's a very um, good point. Let's see what else we had. Um, we actually had someone want to know how you keep your hair so nice every day. Um, I just, <laughs> thank you, thank you for saying that. I just um, put, uh, I just put some wax in my hair, or hair, or gel, I guess you say in English or American, and I just uh, use my brush, taking that up. Like it's a very stereotypical look. And I just use hair products. That's what I'm using. At the moment, I'm not using any, so that's why I'm not using face cam right now. But uh, yeah, I, I for, mo for the most part, I use wax or gel. Uh, so that, that's why I keep it so nicely. I just, I want to look presentable for my videos. I know maybe it's a silly thing, but I want to look, I want to look good. Oh, I, <laughs> so I, I, I totally to get do. it. I'm sporting a hat today only because I'm a, I don't want any of you to see what's going on under the hat. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I want to look a little bit professional. That's why I sometimes wear a, um, a shirt, like a, a dress shirt type of thing. Mm -hmm, no, a dress, mm -hmm. a suit shirt, I guess it, that would be. Yeah, sometimes. But I, I, my hair, it's, it's very easy. You just use some gel, you get a brush, you brush it up to the, up to the upright, I think it is for me. Yeah, it is upright, and then there you go. It, it's very easy. And uh, sometimes I have it from work or after work. When I didn't work, there was even periods where I was like seven days to 14 days without even using any hair products. But I'm very happy that I'm working a lot now because that motivates me to put on hair, uh, put on her, hair products because I always use that at work. So, yeah. Speaking of work, you mentioned that you work in securities. I, I'm curious. Yeah. Tell me about that. Uh, I guess my official title would be a security officer. Uh, it's basically I'm doing I'm doing a lot of things. Like I'm on a contract where they they throw me everywhere basically. Uh, so sometimes I'm like outside, like there's big cruise ships coming to to the port of Savanger. I can say that actually. And I'm like at the gates, uh, checking, uh, making, setting everything ready for the tourists, letting them go out. And when they want to go back in again, we have to check their tickets and we're securing the area because something is called ISPS. I'm not sure what's international sea protection, whatever. It's something that happened after 9-11 uh, to make more pro protective measures towards terrorism. So it's, it's basically just protecting the port and... Um, checking that people have the correct tickets to get back in the boat so the, the cruise ship doesn't get any tourists which does not have, uh, have their tickets. And uh, another part is I work at the airport. There I stand and, you know, in the security terminal, you have to take out your computer, you have to mm -hmm. take out liquids and whatnot. And I am that person who asks you for oh, that and send wow. it through. And uh, I work at a, as a receptionist within 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 different buildings, which hire my the company I work for. And I, I've been a night guard. I've been securing our national day city things, organizing uh, how the the parades will go and whatnot, and just making sure everything is up to order. So I'm like police without authority. Well, then on behalf of everyone, I, I got to tell you, thank you for keeping everyone safe. Uh, that sounds like, you know, a pretty big job. Yeah, the pay sucks. And uh, we don't have much as much authority as police. 
because uh, many people mix us with police. Like I, there was kids. Like even yesterday, I said like, "Oh, hey, mom, look, he is police," and he he pointed at me, and his mom was like, "No, that's not police. He's just making sure things are okay here." <laughs> so it's just like a private, kind of a private version of police. It's a private company. Uh, but we we don't we have much more authority than a normal person, but we have a bit less authority than a police officer. So we're kind of in the middle there. So have you ever run in and into any, you know, incidents? Should we say with with the job? Uh, where I work, typically, they're, they're not much is happening at the airport because. Anyone who tries, they know they're screwed, so there's no point. And there's a police office in the building, so nobody dares to do any bad stuff. But there has been some incidents um, during 17th of May, which is our Norwegian National Day, uh, where someone had lost their pants and they were too drunk to pick them up. I wasn't there, luckily. So like another security officer had to pull his pants up and take on the stranger's penis to put it back in his pants. Oh my (laughs) gosh. And another thing was um, there was someone else drunk and they threw a bottle bottle onto someone else's face. So the ambulance had to come and we had to secure the area and make sure everything was fine for the teenager. And she got in the the truck uh, or in the ambulance and they drove off. So there has been um, there has been some scenarios, but nothing super interesting. Uh, other than that, but a friend of mine who I went to the security course with, which you have to do to work as a security officer, he was almost stabbed. So, and he started the same time as me, just he's been wow. on shopping malls and whatnot. So there, there it's, it can be a dangerous uh, profession and it's definitely not paying enough for the risk. But for me, I don't necessarily care because I don't risk much. At the moment, at the airport, I'm no, I'm not much in any risk to to like die or anything. Uh, so I feel pretty safe where I am, especially as a receptionist. Like there's no office people coming to stab you, so I feel pretty safe at the locations I've been put. So uh, it's not much risk for me, but there is definitely more uh, security officer who's security officers who's risking more, but they're getting the same pay as I do, who risk wow. less. I feel like on depending on the where you are, I think you should get paid a little bit more because you're literally risking your life right. for a bad pay. Or it's a yeah, it's 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 a it's average, <laughs> a little bit below average maybe. Well, at least you uh, didn't have to deal with the pants guy. So <laughs> yeah, luckily I didn't have to touch another guy's penis. That was very <laughs> very good. I'm happy I was somewhere else <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Now, you mentioned that you had to go through training for the security job. Tell me about that. Yeah, so it's seven weeks. One week, uh, you're introduced. Well, it's different now, but how I had it, it's uh, one week to get introduced with the company, which is Securitas. I know it's actually quite big in the US, but uh, I, most Americans have not heard about it. Uh, but it's three red dots, Securitas. Um, you. Have you heard about it? I think so. I think they do yeah. some of the, and I may be wrong and confusing them, but do they do um, the armored, you know, when they go pick up money from ATMs and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, that's yep. that's true. They do that. That's what I'm thinking of. That's, that's them in the US. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like 350,000 employees. So it's all over the wow. world. Um, but it's not as G4S is the biggest one, though. They have like 950,000. Everyone has heard about G4S which I'm sure you've also heard about. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard about G4S? Yeah, that, like that's, that's, the, say, that's the biggest, and we're the one below that. Uh, but what, were, what was, um, yeah, about the training, yeah, I was introduced to the company. Then it was a few weeks, um, I think it was two weeks, just having um, course number one, where you was introduced to uh, fire safety, and you were introduced to how to handle different situations may come up in. And a lot of tests, like if you have a house, where you, would you put the security cameras and why? Where, you would, where you, would you put the fire extinguisher and whatnot? And we had to like, it's, uh, the entire course was a lot of logical thinking, what is logical and what is not. There was many answers, which was not straight yes or no. There was many answers, 
which didn't have a yes or no. Like you just meant that. And if that was correct, then okay, good. And uh, we had a little bit more just just training to be prepared, uh, basically, to, to work as an officer. And they told us about the different objects, where we can end up, what we do. And that's, that's the course right there. And uh, yeah, that's, that's basically, you just learn about security in general. Well, is, was it through the company or is this something that you could take, say, to another securities company and be, you know, still be trained? Yeah, there is different companies such as Nukas, at least in Scandinavia. I don't know if they're big in the other power parts of the world, uh, but I know that I'm sure G4S has some kind of security training. Like every company uh, of the bigger ones have its course. And once you have it, you, you, have, you have your security course, then you can work different places. But if you take it in the US and you want to come to Norway, and work, I think you may have to do some follow-up things, but not much, just because the things are different in Norway than the US, for example, when it comes to security, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, things are different every country in the world, I think. Speaking of you know, airports and traveling, have you traveled outside of Norway at all? Yeah, I've been to um, last, I made, a, I made a few videos during that time. Last fall, I drove or with my dad, Norway's length, which is like 3,100 kilometers each way. Wow. Um, but I've been in Sweden, I've been in Denmark, I've been in Alicante, uh, Benidorm, which is in Spain. I've been in Gran Canary, Gran Canary Islands. I have been, I think that I've been in Berlin, uh, Germany. I've been in Poland, Krakow. Uh, we were some class uh, school trip where we looked at everything horrible that happened to the Jews uh, back in World War II, like the concentration camps and all the bad things there. And we, want, we, and we went, also went on the, in the end of the trip to the world's biggest water park inside, which is Tropical that Island, is. I think. It's in Berlin. It's, that's quite amazing. Uh, so we have experienced, uh, experienced a lot there. And I really love Burger King in Germany because they have a fantastic milkshake. I want to travel there just for the milkshake. <laughs> what kind of milkshake, uh, milkshake. is it? Chocolate. Oh, okay. Chocolate milkshake. It's the best one ever. Wow. Uh, but uh, yeah, like it, it, you couldn't suck it to... Like you, I just opened... Like there's a spoon in the end of your... What's, it, what's this, the thing you, I, you suck it with? Yeah, what's the straw. The, the straw yeah, is the like straw, a spoon like, yeah, too. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you could take much more at the time. And it was just so delicious. I had it like two times... Two, two times a day for like uh, the, <laughs> the five days that we were there. And so we do you not that have we... Burger King in Norway? Yeah, we do, but okay. their, their milkshake sucks. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Norway, but we can't really make good milkshakes. Only one mix, but with, I don't think that's everywhere, anywhere else in the world. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking for a very good milkshake and a recipe, so just let, hit me up. Uh, other than that, uh yeah i want to travel to the uh to the us i want to travel to disneyland which is in uh, where's disneyland again do you know it is we have two there's uh disneyland is california and disney world is in florida yeah i want to go to both of those actually okay. <laughs> I, I, i've heard about both of them and i want to travel to six flags um but yeah california it's it sounds like a very nice place to visit los angeles I also want to travel to New York, and I also want to travel to um, San Francisco and uh, drive over the Golden Great Gate Bridge. So there's just a bunch of places I want to visit in the U.S., like Texas even. Uh, so there's just a bunch of places I want to travel in the U.S. when I have the option to, which hopefully is soon. So, so yeah. you really enjoy traveling? Yeah, I, re I really enjoy traveling. I like being in other countries, so... It's definitely a dream of mine to travel to the U.S. and experience many cool things. And it's so nice because people are speaking English there. I can understand what they're saying. And like in Spanish, in Spain, they're speaking Spanish and I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> How difficult was that when you were, you know, somewhere where you couldn't, couldn't understand or couldn't communicate with people? I knew the basic things like no habla español. That means uh, I don't speak Spanish. I don't understand Spanish. So I know the basics from high school, but it was very, it was weird. And including when I worked with cruise ships, like the last one, 
it was filled with Spanish people. I didn't understand. They started speaking Spanish, and I was like, no, habla español. And they continued speaking Spanish after wow. that. And I'm like, <laughs> what do you want from me? And, so what uh, would you do in that situation? I was just like, I was guiding them towards a map of the city. Maybe that's what they wanted. And uh, then they just went away. Like, okay, they continued speaking Spanish and they walked <laughs> past me. And even even yesterday at the airport, there was some old Chinese woman who, sp- who spoke Mandarin to me. And I told her that because uh, she had a bottle with too much liquid in it because 100 milliliters is, is the max to transfer over. And I told her that she had to like um, tilt it over and and uh, get the water out of it because we couldn't take it through the security control. And she was like, she's speaking Chinese to me. And I, I tried to show her that she had to do it uh, with like uh, with my with my body. I, sh- I showed like how you would pour something and she just continued speaking Chinese. And in the end, the, the the control guy said, "Let's just drive it through, and then we'll then we'll pour it out on the other side." And I'm like, "Okay, thank goodness." So it's very weird to be in a situation where no, where somebody don't understand you, and they continue to speak regardless. So, do they have people around that are multilingual that you could say, "Hey, I need you over here to translate"? No, really? no. <laughs> wow. You know. We don't really have that, no. Uh, but like, we have so many precautions. Like, there is a screen literally telling what you what to do visually, like an animation telling you exactly yeah, what you yeah. need to do. Like, anyone can understand that, no matter where you're from. So, yeah, yeah, if I we agree. we don't necessarily need that. But we, oh, everyone understands English easily and Norwegian, and that's typically the people who's traveling. Most mostly, it's people who's from England or Norway who's traveling. And sometimes from other European countries, but all of them know English. If they don't know English, then what the hell are they doing there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and there are some Polish people who we don't understand, but we have a few Polish workers uh, or employees who, who do know Polish. So in worst case scenario, we, we can get them there to, to talk to them. You mentioned um, in your travels that you had gone and seen, you know, some of the World War II Holocaust stuff. And I have heard yep. many people mention that it's just something, um, it's a big thing, like it left a big impression on them. Tell me how that was for you. It was quite, it was very ridiculous. You went into a building and you saw like 10,000 pairs of shoes or more, maybe 100 pairs, I don't know. And you saw like all this hair from all hair they had taken out. Wow. And it was right as it was quite a surreal experience to feel like it was ridiculous. And you saw pictures of these Jews who was in the concentration camps who was murdered. You saw pictures of them. And it was just insane to to look at all the sorrow and the death that had, that was happening. You saw you looked at an oven where they burnt Jews. And I was like, what the by the way, demonetized if you were on YouTube. Uh, but uh, it's just, uh, it was a surreal experience to look at. And I was a little bit younger. I was like 15 or 16 or something, maybe even younger, 14. Uh, I think, yeah, I think 13 or 14. I think I was 14 or something. So I don't remember it too well how I felt, but I knew, I know that it was very surreal and it was quite insane to to travel there and look at all of that. And for everyone who is interested in history or who's curious about what happened, you can go there and you'll see the big impact of the the horribleness uh, that uh, Hitler did. And so it was quite insane how they treated people worse than dogs. So, yeah. Yeah, my daughter also visited um, recently a concentration camp and she... That's exactly how she described it. it. Was just you know such incredible sour, s- sorrow and despair that she was feeling, and um, so yeah, I think it's something we all should see. And you know, it's it's yeah. an unfortunate event in our history. So yeah, and I'm just so yeah. I just like I'm I'm sorry that you have I I'm, I don't want to get so political here, but I'm sorry that you have your precedence. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sorry about it too. So don't feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> On a lighter I, note, let's let's lighten it up a little bit. Yeah, let's um, do that. 
before we let, I'm, we're going to wrap it up here shortly, but before we let you go, what do you want to leave the viewers with? Any, um, you know, tips or suggestions on any of the League of Angels franchise that you've played? You know, what what is something that you can leave them with that you think can help anybody out there? I want, at least for League of Angels 2, uh, I've made several guides, so I guess I could advise you to watch those. Just search for it. But I want you, if you do enjoy the Age of Angels games, I sincerely advise you not to recharge when they're new. I suggest you to wait if you want to recharge. And if you can't play it without recharging, then I suggest you find another game. Because uh, this game is a money hole, so I want you to make sure that you know what you're getting into, because it's very addicting. I spent nor somewhere north of maybe like a total in the Age of Angels franchise, probably $10,000. And it's wow. not a number you're, I'm a proud to say. And um, there are people who have spent closer to $200,000 uh -huh. on the Avengers 2. Uh -huh. And you can, it's an endless money hole and they keep releasing events, making them recharge. So I suggest you to stay, to try to stay free to play. I know it's difficult because you want to be relevant and you want to be in the top five, but you can still be relevant along other free to play players. Like you guys have a competition of your own as well. And as for Legion of Angels 3, or uh, and the Legion of Angels 2, I suggest to just go with the flow. Just find out what team works for you. And Legion of Angels 2, uh, I know for a fact that one hero team is a very good thing. Uh, you do as good as your hero. Uh, so if you say, have a hero, say you have a team of 200 million bat rating, you have a hero of 170 million bat rating versus a team who has five heroes split split all equally with 200 million bat rating, you would kill them very easily in the Avengers 2 if you had that one hero at 170 million. So I suggest you to go with one hero build on the Avengers 2. As for the Avengers 3, I'm not certain yet. I haven't, I don't have enough experience with it. I'm not sure yet. But it seems to, to me that in PvP, I think one hero team would work. But uh, PvE seems to be a little bit of a thing in uh, League of Legends 3, where you need stars, but like, for example, in Realm. Uh, so it's, of course, nice to keep in mind that maybe having a little bit HP on your front row heroes is useful to 3-star to continue, because you can't continue if you haven't 3-starred. Uh, so it's just a little bit of a finicky thing. I think one heroes, he one hero team is probably more beneficial for PvP. And most PvE, for example, 3 of Origin, but when it comes to a few certain PvE systems, I think balanced may be quite useful as well. At least semi-balanced. Yeah, so that's kind of... But I just hope that uh, people know that you shouldn't really spend money on the game. You will not be happy with how expensive it is after a year. So yeah, that's kind of my, my advice there. It's it's uh, chasing the dragon. It's a never-ending hole that y yeah. you you can get on top, but you're not going to stay on top. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a forever recharging loop. Unless you've so. got a lot of money. Yeah, if you have a lot of money, then by all means, if you have nothing better to spend it on, then by all means do it. But if you want, if you have, if you have a dream, uh, then you can definitely spend it somewhere else, like. You want a new car? Save up. Buy a new car. If you want a house or an apartment, save up. Purchase it. Rather than spend all your money on a virtual game where you don't really get much uh, real-life physical things. But mm -hmm. uh, you can purchase a lot of physical things, a lot of fantastic food, a lot of useful things in real life for the money you spend on the Evangelist uh, games. You can right. get much more enjoyment out of different real-life things. And even if you don't, you, I understand people recharging because it's a hobby. You pay, you have fun for a while, it gives you enjoyment. But you have to limit yourself a little bit at least so Absolutely. that you can get your life in order. Once you have your life in order, you have a car, you have a house or an apartment, you own it, you pay rent or whatever, you pay your taxes. You have some extra money, of course. I understand you want to recharge if you have nothing else you want. But it shouldn't be before that. If you don't own a car or an apartment or whatever you want, don't recharge much on the Avengers before that because that will only delay the potential happiness and usefulness you will have to, for the rest of your life with a, with a home. 
That is great advice, yeah. that wonderful advice. Uh, John, I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. I have really enjoyed our talk. Um, I hope everybody else has enjoyed it too. Uh, if you do enjoy Incredible John, please visit his YouTube, his Discord community, or support him on Patreon. And don't forget, you can let him know what you want to see um, for your support on Patreon. So. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And um, guys, it, we will be back, I believe, at 10 p.m. is my next stream. So thank you guys all for joining us. I really appreciate you guys and your support. And I will see you in the next stream. Thanks, John. Thanks. Have a nice day, everyone. You too.